It's Monday. I just took a break from homeschooling and I'm about to switch to work mode. And I wanted to spend a minute giving a shout out to Mrs. Noah. Okay. I was in prayer and I was journaling and writing my notes and what I thought I heard from God and what I heard from myself and all of those sorts of things. And God put four big things on my heart. One of them was just to cry out. Cry out in praise. Cry out with your complaints to God. Cry out and share His Word. Another thing He put on my heart was praying. Be in deep, deep prayer right now for the safety of others, for the safety of my family. He put on my heart giving, and He put on my heart life in the ark. Okay? So, these days feel a little like being in the ark. Now, I'm going to go ahead and draw some assumptions about being in the ark. You know, Mrs. Noah got on the ark in faith that these floods were going to come, so kudos to her for, you know, following her husband's lead, for getting onto an ark with three of her daughter-in-laws. You know, that could have not gone well. We can go ahead and assume that all of the Enneagram numbers were in place. You know, the twos were being super helpful to even those that didn't want help. The nines were pretending nothing was going on. The fours had their big feelings. The fives wanted to be behind closed doors. Um, the sevens were trying to put on a show. The eights were trying to control everything. Yeah, you know how you are, okay? So we can assume that all of the Enneagram numbers were in place, that all of the personalities didn't mesh well together, and all of a sudden they're on the ark with what I understood yesterday after I read this story again was up to like 45,000 animals. I'm not a math whiz. But in the commentary in my Bible, it said that 45,000 animals could fit on that boat. No, there was seven pairs of clean animals and one pair of unclean animals of all the species. So I guess that's a lot of animals. Their days may have been spent trying to care for these animals, rationing food. Don't think there were kids on the boat, but if there were, they were definitely saying, you're limited to two to three snacks a day. Don't eat all of our supplies. Okay. And one thing about the story that I don't think I understood was how long they were on this ark. They were on there for like 371 days. I just kind of assumed it was like a 40-day flood. Somebody said, are we there yet? They sent out the dove. It came back, you know. Um, but no, the total, the total span of this was like 371 days. So they were there a long time. So I'd like to go ahead and propose this question to you all today. How are you surviving being on the ark. We've received some good tips and are putting some good things in place at our home and we're not always getting it right. We're just not, okay? Um, a couple of things that I've read, um, one thing I read on the Vine Wellness page was that a feeling um, lasts 90 seconds unless you fuel it with a story. So like if you get mad at your husband or you get mad at your sister, um, you can actually kind of you know, take some deep breaths and calm down from that. But if you tell the story over and over and over, then you feel the anger more. Um, I've read in the Life Model Works books about taking three minutes of just calming breathing, um, that that could be helpful. We're going through a thing right now um, with the girls that um, talks about rocks and Play-Doh. The rocks are things that you can control and change, and the Play-Doh, I mean, I'm sorry, excuse me, the rocks are things that you cannot control and change, but the Play-Doh can be molded. So an example of that would be like, you cannot change the way your sister's acting, but you can change your reaction to her. Now, I'll be honest with you, the first time we told the kids that, they said, I want to throw a rock at my sister's face, okay? but after a few times of going over that, I think that they're um, maybe a little bit more on board. Anyway, if you want to comment below some good tips and tricks on surviving life in the ark right now, I think that would be really helpful for all of us to see. I would like to read this quote from Brene Brown on wholehearted living. Again, I'm not getting this right, but I just feel like sharing this because if I share it with you guys on the interwebs, then somehow it holds me accountable to doing it. So here's what Brene Brown talks about. This is from The Gifts of Imperfection. She said, 
Wholehearted living is about engaging with our lives from a place of worthiness. It means cultivating the courage, compassion, and connection to wake up in the morning and think, no matter what gets done or how much is left undone, I am enough. So, I'm on here today to tell you that you're enough. You are the one I'm looking at. You're enough. This is Holy Week. At the end of this week, we're going to celebrate the resurrection of our Savior. And through Him, we're enough. Through Him, we're made right. Through Him, we're called righteous. So just pray and say, Jesus, be in my heart. I accept you. I want to get rid of all the stuff that's not from you, and I just want to be with you. And through Him, you'll be made right. And at the end of living on the ark, after it was all said and done, God made a promise. We've all heard it. We've all heard about the rainbow as a sign of God's promise not to flood the world again. This is what he said. He said, never again will I curse the ground because of humans. He said, never again will I destroy living creatures as I have done. Genesis 8.22 says, as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. So we're going to have seed time where we're planting seeds. We're going to have harvest where we're reaping harvest. We're going to have cold. We're going to have heat. We're going to have days and we're going to have nights. They'll never cease. That's his promise to us in this time. So comment below. Let me know some of the strategies you guys have in place for in the ark living right now. Some of the ways that you're calming your family down when things get hyper. Um, just some of the best practices you found. And it doesn't always have to work. We decided we were going to order all of our groceries framed into these recipes and make a recipe book and take a picture of everything we cooked. That lasts for one recipe. But you know what? It was a fun one recipe. So it may not always work. But again, no matter what gets done and what gets left undone, no matter what works and what doesn't, we are worthy and we are enough. We're called righteous through Jesus and he promises our protection, our salvation, and I'm praying over you guys right now for protection and for health and for salvation, for peace in your homes as you continue through this time in your ark. Talk to you soon.